Hello to everyone. So glad to be with you guys this evening. I've been very much looking forward to it. And uh, I'll tell you what, we've been through quite a few days of uh, old Easter conversation. And uh, I, I now we're, we're beginning to look here on the other side of Easter. And I just wanted the time just to sit down, talk to you about some of the issues that we're dealing with now, and maybe talk about some of the upcoming events that we're going to be facing. But sit down for a few moments and uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, just relax me for a few moments. Of course, I'm drinking a cup of coffee. You know, <laughs> I, I, I've had people suggest, do you think it's good for you to be drinking coffee that late in the evening? I know. I drink it. It seems like I drink it way too much. Um, I think I probably need to invest in a coffee company as much as, as, much as I ingest. Uh, but uh, I do seem to I do seem to love the coffee. <laughs> so sit down with me. Maybe yours isn't coffee. Maybe you want to sit down and uh, just have a glass of tea or some water or something that you can just just relax for a few moments. And I want to talk to you just to visit. Uh, we're here. We are. We're still uh, still being held up. We're not allowed to go do a lot of the things that we wanted to do. We're still asked to stay at our homes and. And, or at least as much as possible. I know that we can get out, at least in this region of the country, we can still get out and move around, but uh, we've got a lot of restrictions that we're trying to honor. <clears throat> and let me just say something to you. I think it's important that you honor that. Uh, whether you think it's right or whether you don't think it's right, uh, the people that are in charge are doing the best they know to do. Uh, they really are. A lot of these people I know and they're good people. They're trying to make the right decisions, and it's and it's a challenge, you know. Because on one hand, I was just listening to the president talk about it, and he made the statement uh, about restarting things. And what's going to happen is, is if he restarts things, and someone else catches this virus and dies, then what they're going to say is, because of your actions, you kill people. If he doesn't start it, what's going to end up happening is, is there's going to be people that's going to lose their jobs or uh, lose their their employment or whatever, and they're going to say, it's your fault. So, it you know, it's kind of between a rock and a hard place. And so they're really doing the best they know to do. And what we want to do as believers, we want to be supportive. We need to be. This is a right thing to do. Uh, I'm not saying this is this is not this is not an attack against what we believe. It's not, it's not the message. It's, it's kind of the policy. It's, it's the thing of not of the fact of have, do we have church. It's, they're asking us to make some adjustments uh, the way we do church. And I probably have talked more about the gospel over the last couple of weeks than I have in the last several years. And hopefully you have too. So don't don't get all caught up in, in, in the arguments. A lot of those things, they only lend themselves to strife. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't need that because it opens the door. As a matter of fact, that's something that I'd like to talk to you about for just a couple of moments. I'd like to talk to you about the, the problems with strife. You know, I was posed the question some time back, uh, has this virus come on the United States as judgment from God? And I understand the context that they were talking about. And I've thought a lot about it. And I really don't think that's the case. I really don't. I, I, I don't think it's that. Or at least not in the way that people think. Um, but I do believe that the way we conduct ourselves opens the doors to things that we don't want. And I'm talking about the strife and conflict. Uh, you know, Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2 is, is, is gave this reference. It says, as the bird by wandering and, and the swallow by flying, the curse causeless shall not come. And so what that's basically saying is, is there's things that we do that opens the door to things in our lives that we don't want. And sometimes it's trouble. Sometimes it's problems. And we can't blame anybody else. We've opened the door to it. And, you know, one of the biggest things that I think that really identifies where we've been as a country over this last couple of years 
is uh, strife. I, I think that we have opened the door to a lot of things, not because of judgment from God, but I think we've opened the door to a lot of things because we've allowed ourselves to be in division and strife. And I'm just telling you something, that will, that will destroy not just a nation, that'll destroy your family, that'll destroy your relationships, it'll destroy your business, when the, the Bible said the servant of the Lord must not strive. Now, <laughs> it didn't say unless you have a good cause. No, that's not the direction we're going. We're not people who are caught up in strife. We're not going to, to lend ourselves to that. We're, some people live by it. And they, I'm telling you, they are. And of course, they're also the people that are so drugged up and they're so burdened down that they're having nervous breakdowns and, and collapses because they live in that mentality of strife. But that's not God's will for you. It's not God's will for you to be in contention. It's not God's will for you to be in strife. You know, even the Bible said concerning the husband and wife, it said if, if a husband and wife gets and stays in contention with each other, that their prayers will be hindered. Now, here's what that says. When you get in strife with people or whatever, you, you stop the kingdom of God from functioning in your life. In other words, you pray, but your prayers are hindered. You're asking God for things, but they don't work. There are things that you do that affects how the kingdom of God functions in your life. And so I want to just say, if there's anything that we must protect, we must protect. I'm not saying that you have to submit to things that you think are wrong. And I'm not saying that you don't need to rebuke or exhort or instruct, but there's a big difference in that and being in strife with other people. We cannot afford that to happen. You know, I was thinking about uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, where Paul was talking to the Corinthian people, and he said, I desired to feed you with meat, but I couldn't do it. Now, in reference to the meat there, I was desiring to take you to a deeper place. I was desiring to give you things that's a level up. But he said, I couldn't do it. He said, I've had to feed you with milk because you're carnal. And now, how did he identify that? Because there was envy, jealousy, and division. See, those things that work in our life stops the kingdom of God from functioning and we just hit this glass ceiling. We can't, we can't move forward. It literally stops us from functioning the way that God wants. The kingdom ain't going to work. Your prayers are hindered. You know, we find that same thing over in 1 Peter, or 2 Peter chapter 1, uh, where he talked about the word of God. He said that the word of God gives us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything that we need comes through the knowledge of him, which is the word of God. But then he said something else. He said, add to your faith virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity. Seven things. He said, if these things be in you and abound, they will make you that you're neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's what that means. To be unfruitful simply is speaking about the fact that whatever you're doing isn't working. You know, I've been saying this and praying this and doing this, and it ain't working. It stopped working. My prayers don't work. Why? Well, because I'm not walking in brotherly kindness. I'm walking in strife and contention. I'm walking. See, that's a, that, that is something that absolutely has hindered us from moving forward. Bad attitudes, division. Well, well I just want you to know that they're wrong. Well, they may be wrong. I, I, so what? what? What does that have to do? Why, why does that draw you into the place that you have to be in contention and division with everybody? But, but everybody that you listen to nowadays, good gracious, they're mad. They're mad at the government and they're mad at this one and they're mad at that one. I mean, it's like, seriously, it's a, it's a constant problem. The people that are mad at the government and mad at the president, it really concerns me absolutely concerns me because I just see this as an assault, an attack against us as believers and, and not, you, you know, well, I think I should be able to, no, sometimes you should not be able to. And I'm just going to tell you something right now. Facebook is a wonderful thing. 
and I'm using it right now because it is a great tool for me to sit down in your living room and talk to you. But I'm just going to tell you something. The people that get on Facebook and they have a fight, I've seen people almost get divorced on Facebook. I'm thinking, have you lost your mind? Come on, you are, you're someone who's called to a higher place than that. And so I just want to say that it's important that we not get into strife. Do you have the opportunity? Yeah. Do you have a reason? Most likely you do. But you have to make the decision, I'm not getting into strife. I'm not going to get into an argument. I'm not going to fight with you about anything. Don't fight with people on the internet. Don't fight with people through the mail. Don't text people. Don't, don't, don't allow yourself to get into strife because I promise you, it will hinder you and it will stop you. You know, we all love Mark 11, 23 and 24. You remember those scriptures? Wonderful scriptures. Jesus was talking about when he cursed the fig tree, he was talking about how faith worked and how you cause things to happen. He said, he said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he saith will come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. And then he topped it off by saying, therefore I say unto you that whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. What a powerful promise. I mean, seriously, that Mark 11, 23 and 24 is great. But verse 25 said, and when you stand praying, forgive. So what happens is, is the subject of forgiveness completely obliterates verse 24, verse 23 and 24. It stops it, man. It stops it right there. It ain't moving forward. So you need to, you need to make the decision because your actions opens doors and closes doors to the swallow and the bird and the curse. They cause us, they, they can't just come on you. You have to open the door. You have to initiate it. And you do that through unforgiveness, through strife, through sin in your life. And I'm talking about things that that are inappropriate, things that that God has really dealt with you about. You when you get through obedience and you get in unforgiveness or whatever the case is, uh, it opens a door in your life, and you have to go do that. That's the beautiful thing about repentance. Repentance closes doors. It closes down the things that's feeding the failure in your life. Uh, the curse that has tried to come against you. Yeah, it's there. I'm telling you, it's powerful. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's like uh, the, the flu. Man, it's there. It will kill you. The flu can do that. It has done that to a lot of people. But don't open the door to it. Don't open the door. Number one, take care of yourself physically. Wash your hands. Be sensible in your relationship with other people. Take care of yourself but but don't open the door to things, though, that's going to just come into your life and wreck your life. It's real. And so just as you would do that in the natural, I'm not going to go take of something that's going to destroy me. I'm not going to get caught up in strife, which we seem to do without giving much thought to it, without realizing it's going to come back and it's going to hurt me. So all of that being said, I, I want to say... That, that I really feel that, that there's a lot of things that's happening in this country right now because we've opened the door. And the church has been right at the forefront. The church has been right there just as ugly as they can possibly be. And we can't do that. We, we must be better. I'm telling you, God is calling us to a higher place. And so I just, I just encourage you to pray for America and and if you've got things in your heart that's inappropriate, repent. If uh, Make the decision that I'm not going to walk in unforgiveness toward anyone. I, I, I don't need the consequences of that. And I'm not going to leave an open door for sickness, disease, infirmity, or whatever to come in and stop the word from working in my life. Because I need the what the Bible said 
He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Wherefore, given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That's what the word of God will do for you. But you can sabotage that, and all that will be unfruitful. It won't work. So, so you see what I'm saying? And that's why it's important that you just that you just simply uh, let's let's pull order to ourselves. This this uh, this pandemic is uh, changing. Uh, I feel like we're going to begin to things are going to begin to happen. We're going to come out of this thing. Uh, everybody's going to begin to get back to work. I feel very optimistic. I'm telling you, I'm I am so optimistic about what's going to happen, and uh, it's it's important that let's get ourselves back together. Let's get ourselves back in line with the Word of God. Let's get ourselves back in line with one another. Um, if if you're upset at somebody, forgive them. Forgive them. Uh, you know, Peter <laughs> Peter made a statement one time. He asked Jesus. He said, uh, and of course, Peter he wasn't used to forgiving anybody. Uh, he really wasn't. <laughs> he asked Jesus one time, he said, how often shall I forgive my brother that sinned against me? And then he pulled out the highest number that he could think of. He said, till seven times. <laughs> he was so proud of himself. And Jesus said, Peter, you don't even understand. You don't understand the principle of love and forgiveness. He said, you forgive them times seven. That's 490 times. In other words, there's no limit that you put on forgiveness for somebody. You're holding someone in a prison is not going to help them and it's sure will help you. And so don't get, don't get in that judgment seat. You were forgiven so much and you were to handle one another the way that God, for Christ's sake, handled you. So you need, you Pull yourself together. Come on, we we have things to do. And I believe this week is going to be a good week. Uh, this is going to be a good week. I believe it's going to be for your family. And and uh, I'm, I just want to encourage you to be optimistic, uh, be strong. Come on, get up. Let's find out what we believe. We've got things to do. And I'm so excited about what's in front of us. Uh, I want to pray for you. Uh, you know, if you've got some things maybe in your life that I, that I could join with you in, I would love to do that. I really would. I would enjoy, uh, I, I pray for you anyway, but if you've got a specific need that I could maybe be in agreement with you on and pray with you about, I'd love to do that. And so if you'll just jot that down, you can either, if you want to, you can private message me if you want, or you can email me. Uh, all the information is on, on the website, our church website, fwcelgin.com. And you can go there and you've got a place where you can personally address me or if you want to do it on Facebook or whatever. But I just encourage you to uh, to uh, stay in touch with me. And I want to know what I can do and uh, how I can, because I've enjoyed the time with you. I really have. I've had a great time. Hey, I do want to tell you, we have uh, a lot of things right now that I'm starting to put on YouTube. Uh, I'm, I've got a new thing that I'm doing. It's kind of a video podcast that I'm going to be doing on YouTube, and it's going to be kind of conversation. I'm going to be sitting at, at, across from, you know, two or three people, and we're, we're discussing things that are happening, and uh, uh, I'll be putting those things on YouTube. I'll be posting them over the next few days, and I would like for you to just kind of join in and let me know what you think about it, because I really feel like this is the Lord. I feel like the Lord is leading me into these areas deeper and deeper. And I'm not exactly sure where he's going to go, but I'm going to take the ride all the way. Man, I'm telling you something. I have no intention of dragging my foot. I have no intention of quitting. I'm going to throw this thing into high gear and I'm going to give it everything I've got. And I want to have some fun with it. I really, I would enjoy taking this ride with you if at all possible. Okay. All right. Well, I love you guys. Uh, I, I just wanted to share with you concerning what's in your life and, 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 and basically to ask you, do you have any open doors? Um, do you have any doors in your life that maybe has been open for uh, some reason, some way or another? Do, do, is, is it possible that maybe it's through some sinful activity or is it through some uh, uh, unforgiveness? And, and usually that's where it is, more strife and unforgiveness. Those are the bigger things. 
because those are the things that are connected to people. I, you know what's so strange? I, I really believe, I believe that, you got to hear my context in this. Uh, please don't take this out of context because I'm not diminishing what somebody might be doing wrong here. That's not wrong. But I think there's degrees of, of uh, what we would say sin or violations. I think there's degrees of it. There's some that's worse than others. Now, let me, let me explain what I'm saying. I think that the things that are connected to other people are the things that are much more serious. You know, I know that God certainly is concerned about you, that he didn't want you doing things that's gonna be foolish and, and hurtful to yourself. But when what you do damages someone else, that's a serious thing. And when it comes to strife and unforgiveness and all of those that we talk about, the reason why that's so destructive is because it doesn't just deal with you there are other people on the other end of that destruction, and you don't want to be the cause of that. I, I think that those are the things that causes us to receive the greater challenges or in ways like the other things is because it hurts other people. And, and you know, you may do some stupid thing that God says, what's the matter with you? Why are you doing this? Don't do that. But it becomes a whole different ball game when what you do becomes destructive to someone else and they are hurt or damaged or destroyed as a result of it. I think that's so important. Don't you ever forget that the Bible says God so loved the world. He so loved the world. And he expects that same thing from us. And so I think that that's probably the reason why some of the things come across and probably are much more severe than other things is because people are involved. And, and I don't ever want to leave someone hurt if, if I can keep from it. I know some people, they live their life, they've got a trail of dead and wounded behind them. You know, it's almost like they don't care what happens. They don't care if someone cries. They don't care if someone's wounded. They don't care if they leave someone in a state of confusion. And even some people have done that religiously. Well, I don't care. I just told them, blah, blah, blah. And you know what I'm saying. And I don't ever want that to happen. If, if there's any way that I possibly can, I don't ever, ever, ever want to leave somebody in my, in my trail that is wounded. I, if, if I can keep from it, I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to draw back. But people are important to God. They're and there's nobody that I can look at and say, well, they're not important. They are. They are. And so I I, I want that. I, I don't ever want I don't ever want to leave a trail of dead and wounded. I, I want I want you know, almost like Samuel. You remember when Samuel was uh, anointing uh, Saul as king, and of course he was quite put out by the whole situation, as was God. God said they haven't rejected you. They rejected me. But Samuel, he brought everybody together. And he said, I need to know from anyone right now, have I done anything that, have I stolen from anyone? Have I taken bribes against anyone? Have I, and he put out the whole laundry list. They said something, they said, no, there's nothing that you've done. What an honorable thing to say. Now, I know sometimes you can't always help it, but I think that should be our goal is the fact that we ever have, it, we don't give opportunity for anyone to ever say you did this. Sometimes we do. I know we all have some things in our past that we regret and you can't unscramble eggs. You can't you can't fix it. But I think we can plan enough that we can say I'm not going to do anything or engage in anything that would leave somebody wounded because they're important. You're important. I want to protect you. I don't want anyone to hurt you. I, I don't want I don't want you feeling a wound over anything whatsoever. Um, so, so I love you and I appreciate you. Thank you for spending this time with me. I'm going to be back tomorrow at 7 o'clock. And uh, I'm going to be setting up a series of things that we're going to be talking about. I'll let you know more about that. But uh, I appreciate you so much. Uh, please go to fwcelgin.com and uh, hook up with me there, would you? I love you guys. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.